All right, what's up? How's it going, everybody? Dean DeMarzo here on Longest Solo Ever Live. It's Thursday night. We're hanging out. Uh, tonight's project is walking through all of Green Hill Funk, which is an album I put out last summer. Uh, we're going to go through song by song, uh, checking out this album. How's everybody doing tonight? So, uh, if you if you haven't checked it out, Green Hill Funk is an album of Sonic the Hedgehog covers uh, in the style of... I was shooting for the style of Wolfpack, but just in general, it was like a classic, funky Motown style. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, like, really funky guitars and bass. I tried to keep things as simple, as dead simple as possible. How's it going, Nelson? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and we're going to get started, I think. So, let's hop into progress. And we're going to start with the very first track on the album. How's it going, Copan? Raphael? Uh, and we're going to start by just, just listening through each tune. And I actually have it rigged up pretty cool here so that you can, um, you can see the original video along with the song. Let me just make this a little bigger here. There we go. Um... So here's, here's uh, the first track on the album. Um, this is Starlight Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Uh, this is the very first song I arranged for the album. Um, it was the first song I finished. It's the first song I recorded. And it kind of set the tone for the rest of the album in a really cool way. Uh, this also features my uh, longtime friend, Richard, who's an awesome sax player. I've known him since I was like seven years old. Uh, we went to elementary school together. He's a great sax player, great music teacher, and uh, I had him guest on saxophone. There he is. <laughs> He's in the chat. What's up, Rich? So here's Starlight Zone. How's it going, Victor? Hey, Michael Almanzar. Same. Yeah, there's some scary weather here, folks. If I disappear, that's why. of this Copan? I'd love to check that out. Thanks, Skyron. And yes, Norberto, we will be definitely talking about guitar tips for this style in particular. Yes, please send that over. Rich, don't worry about it. There's so much about this album that I would do differently for my own playing. It's that you you can't possibly escape that when you're when you're listening to your own playing. You killed it on this. Uh, so yeah, let's go track by track through this. Uh, and thanks, Victor. Um, so uh, the biggest thing, uh, the the biggest challenge I had with this album was getting the drum sound just right. Uh, 
like I said, this whole thing is is me trying to do my take on Wolfpack's music. Um, Wolfpack, if you don't know them, they're this crazy awesome funk band. Uh, started out just a bunch of college kids making funky tunes, and now they're literally, I mean, they headlined Madison Square Garden last year. They are enormous. They're so successful, and they have such a cool sound, this really classic vintage funky sound with this like weird, quirky, modern twist. It's so cool. And the drum sound was the, the part I had, uh, I, I kind of spent the most time focusing on. So if I solo the drums here, you'll kind of hear what I'm going for. Skip ahead to something funkier. And I kind of went over this in the video I did about how to get the Wolfpack sound, um, but I'm just going to go over this for like two seconds, just talk about what I did to, to get the sound I was looking for. Also, man, this room was a mess when I shot this. <laughs> if you look, look right here, this, this wall plate, the, this power plug didn't even have a wall plate on it. I had just put these floors down and then I recorded this drum part on it and I destroyed one of these floor planks. I was so mad. Um, I did not think that through. I had a drum rug under it and everything should have been fine, but went right through it. Uh, so this is, I, I was really strict to stick to a three piece kit, kick, snare, and a hi-hat. That's, that's actually technically a two-piece kit. You don't count the cymbals typically. But uh, I really wanted to keep it as dead simple as possible, limit myself as much as possible to really try to push my playing into like a weird new space. Um, plus, if you listen to Wolfpack's music, it really is just the kick and the snare most of the time. Um, how's it going, Altair? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, so this is just a kick and a snare and a hi-hat. The kick drum is uh, a Gretsch uh, Catalina Birch kick. Um, how's it going, Omni? Um, and, uh, oh, thanks for subscribing, Norbert. Norberto. Um, so the kick is my Catalina Birch drum set, the same one I use in all my videos, and just has a big pillow in it, and then an AKG D112 microphone sitting on there. Uh, Kept that super dead simple. I tuned it really low to the point where the head was almost like flappy. And uh, and that gave me just this super dead sound. Let's listen to the kick without any effects on it. This is the raw sound of the kick. This is going to sound like garbage. Doesn't that sound terrible? I love it. <laughs> so the first thing I did... I'm going to get to the, the gentleman with no name. Uh, I'm going to get to that the Wolf compressor. If you, if you look over here, you might see that I have that going on. Um, so yeah, this is a, a gate, which is going to cut every sound out of here. That isn't, um, isn't Altair. I didn't get to that. I'm sorry. I'm going to, uh, this is going to cut out every sound that isn't above this threshold. Check out what it does to the kick drum. Here's without, and then here's with gives us just the attack of the kick. Then I have an EQ going on. I'm going to boost the highs and boost the uh, the cut the mids a little bit. So boost the highs, cut the mids. And it's really the mids that are making the big difference here. Take a listen. Yeah, I love that effect. Uh, next, I have R Bass. Uh, this is a Waves plugin that feels like cheating. <laughs> it just adds so much low end chunk uh, to this that it it is unreal how much boom it adds without actually taking up that much space in your mix. Let's take a listen. Here's without. And then here's with. It can be subtle. If I crank it up, you'll really hear it, though. Check it out. There's the boom. So, that's our bass. And finally, I have a Native Instruments Transient Master. Uh, this is, this is kind of like a weird compressor that does two things. It can increase the attack, the first sound of the instrument, the, the snap of the kick drum. Uh, and it can 
decrease the attack as well if you wanted it to. Um, and then it, do it does the same to the sustain, the rest of the sound. Uh, everything that happens after that initial hit. Uh, so let's take a listen to what the Transient Master does, and then I'll get to those questions. Here's without, and here's with. You hear how it just gets rid of everything after the initial hit, so we get this really clean kick hit. Here's with the sustain in there. So that's what's getting us our kick drum sound. Uh, real quick, Altair asked, how long is the stream going? I think we're going to go till 10 as usual. Uh, sometimes we wrap up a little early, but we'll probably be going for uh, about three hours total. Um, Victor, any album recommendations on how to where to start with Wolfpack? Uh, Thrill of the Arts is the album I started with. That's got so many other big hits. Um, I recommend, and I'm going to have to double check. I honestly, I listen to like their entire discography on a regular basis. But I hate to say it, I don't remember album which song is on which album that well, because I usually just listen through literally their entire discography pretty often. Okay, uh, Thrill of the Arts is probably where you should start best. Uh, that's got pretty much all their big hits, uh, aside from uh, 1612, which is on another album called Fugue State. So I would definitely listen to Fugue State and Thrill of the Arts. Uh, after that, branch out to everything else they've ever done, as well as The Fearless Flyers, uh, Theo Katzman's solo album, and um, someone else, Woody Goss, just dropped a great solo album as well uh, with a, a singer. And and that is a good start. Oh, and Corey Wong, of course. Uh, Corey Wong is the guitar player featured in a lot of Wolfpack music, and he is just an absolute genius. He's amazing. Uh, Altair asks, do I have a launch pad? Yes, I do. Is it? That's somewhere. I don't have it here. I think it's packed up right now. Uh, I never use it. It's cool. It is cool. It's a little tricky to set up, and it's not great for my purposes. Um, it's awesome if you're working in Ableton a lot, if you're doing mostly EDM stuff, and if you like working in Ableton session view, then it's really good. Uh, I don't work in session view. I only work in arrangement view in Ableton. So it's just a cool toy to me. I really like it, but I, I don't, uh, I don't love it. Um, so let's move on through the kit. And this is the only song we'll talk about the drum set. Uh, this is the only song we'll talk about most of the tones, to be honest, because I, I really tried to keep the tone, uh, consistent throughout the whole album. So songs after this, we'll be talking more about the songs than the tones, I promise. Uh, snare drum, we got a really similar effect chain. I'll just give you the original snare for a second. And just to show you, take a look at the snare. Um, where can you see it? There we go. If you look at the snare drum, this looks ridiculous, right? Uh, I've got my snare drum, the head is practically off the drum. Uh, most of those lugs, most of the, the tension rods are almost like finger tight, like they're practically out of the drum. So that head is like paper. It's just flopping all over the place. And then I put a towel on it, just a dish rag, and actually like taped it on the underside because it wasn't staying still. And uh, I got this just like floppy sound that I loved. It's exactly what I wanted for this album. Take a listen. Here's the the plain drum sound. Where is it? What's happening here, folks? Oh, it's, oh, silly me. Here. Okay. You can hear there's a ton of bleed from the hi-hat, uh, so we are going to naturally uh, gate that out. But first we apply an EQ. This looks crazy, right? Here's what the EQ is doing for us. I'm actually adding a lot of bass in this snare. I really wanted a thumpy snare drum. So I'm adding a bass. Uh, this one is, I, I don't remember, but I have to imagine that's trying to get rid of some ring that was going on. Let's take a listen to what I was getting rid of. I'm going to boost that same spot for a second. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird ring that was going on. And yes, JubeTube, this is 100% the Conscious Club fill. You caught me. <laughs> 
Conscious Club is a killer Wolfpack song. Listen to the instrumental version first a few times and then listen to the, the finished song with the vocals. It'll make you appreciate it more. I don't think I recognized that that was the Conscious Club, Phil, until you told me that. But yes, you're 100% right. <laughs> Good catch, Jube. Uh, then I'm cutting some highs, which you never, ever would see me do on a snare drum. But I'm going for, like, thud more than I am crack on this. Uh, next, we have a gate, as we, as we are with all of these. And you can see it's not perfect to getting everything out, but that's okay. When you're when you're recording drums, it doesn't have to sound perfect when it's soloed because no one will ever hear it soloed. All that matters is does it sound good with the whole kit. Uh, and finally, I have Slate's VMR, uh, their virtual mix rack, which is mostly for this um, this SSL EQ here, where I am <laughs> I am boosting the highs back in because it sounded good, and I'm cutting the lows too. What am I doing? But it sounds good. Uh, and then finally we have a distressor just slamming the heck out of it. Just compressing it really hard. Uh, finally, the hi-hat. I'll be really quick. Uh, I'm cutting a lot of lows out of this and a lot of highs. I didn't want it to get too crackly. Let's listen to the hi-hat. There is no hi-hat there. Where is it? Oh, that's the side stick. I'm sorry. The side stick is a duplicate of the snare track, uh, just added to the beginning of the song because I wanted to process it slightly differently. The hi-hat. I had an EQ. There we go. That's more like a hi-hat EQ. So I'm cutting the lows. You can see, just really chopping them off, boosting the highs a little bit. And then I have a gate on here, which isn't doing much now that I listen to it. Thanks so much, Altair. That means a lot. Uh, so yeah, let's listen to... Oh no! <laughs> oh no! My, my, my camera's gone. <laughs> what happened, folks? Come back. Come back, please. Are you there? Yes, you're there. Okay. Um, I mentioned some things we're going to change about my rig. I have a new graphics card. And I have a new way of connecting my camera using the uh, Envato, I keep saying Envato, Elgato Cam Link. Um, which, uh, what's up, Tyler? You're not too late. We're just starting. Um, I have the El Elgato Cam Link, and uh, I guess it just shut off on me for no reason, so that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're back. So, yeah, the, the, these are the drums. Let's take a listen to them one more time. And this gets to the first instance of what will be many uses of uh, a plugin somebody mentioned earlier, Wolf Compressor. And this is a plugin put out by Jack Stratton of Wolfpack uh, in, in uh, working with a company called Goodhertz, which is an awesome plugin company, to make a compressor that suited his needs to get his sound. And it is awesome. It is so cool. Um, I, you'll see me use it a bit more later. Right now, I'm using it at its most simple uh, purpose, which is just literally a compressor. It has these wow controls and lo-fi filters and stuff. I have that all the way turned off right now. I'm just using this as a compressor, and you can see I actually have it mixed mostly dry. Uh, let's see what happens if I really push it. See, it gets really crunchy. You can see lo-fi takes a lot of the a lot of the high end off of it. I didn't want that for my drum tracks, but we do end up using that on the master channel later. Cool. Let's move on from drums uh, onto the bass part. Uh, so for this album, I used I actually bought this bass for the album because um, the only other bass I had was my uh, my Ibanez uh, sound gear the five string that you see me play in a lot of my older videos. Um, and I work at a music store and we are, a, we're a Fender dealer and we got this bass in. This is a Squire classic vibe, seventies jazz bass. Um, it, it retails for like 400 bucks new and it's amazing. It's, uh, 
it's just ridiculously good for 400 bucks. Um, it's, rid it's ridiculously good at any price, but I couldn't believe it at 400 bucks. And, um, I, I took it home that day. It didn't even make it onto the shelf. <laughs> so I paid, I paid for it, but I took it up. Um, and it's, it's great. I needed, uh, something funkier for this album. Also something that looked visually like vintage, you know, the, the five string Ibanez doesn't really sell the, the vintage Wolfpack vibe. So I wanted something a little more cohesive with the, the whole vibe. Um, so yeah, I grabbed this Squire. This is a Squire classic vibe and it, it kills. So let's hear that bass sound. That's okay, Alter. Don't worry about it. Honestly, we, I'm, I'm talking some high level stuff. Um, if you, if you want to learn some of this stuff, go check out, I have some beginning music production tutorials on EQ, mixing and compression. Just go check those out and start getting the general idea of that. Um, I'm just talking the audio stuff. We'll get to like the fun music stuff in just a minute. I promise. So don't worry if, if some of this goes over your head, it'll, it'll all make sense soon. So let's take a listen to the bass. Bass chain is really simple. I have an EQ not doing much. Little mid boost, little high cut. Actually, a little high boost. Maybe I cut some of this. This might have been just some honkiness I wanted to get rid of. Let's listen to that. That's where a lot of the right hand finger noise was. Every time I pushed my fingers down, it would go like... And I wanted to get rid of that. And I figured that was living right around this range, around uh, 3300 hertz. Um, that's the EQ. Virtual mix rack again, uh, this time just using their 1176 compressor. Let's take a listen to what that's doing. Here's none of it, and here's all of it. I'm just adding a little bit of life into it. I'm not doing anything crazy with this because the bass sounds great right out of the gate. And finally, we have our bass again. Again, really, really subtle, really simple. Oh, you gonna play? Come on, Brutals. There you go. I could push this really hard. But I don't need to. Oh wait, it's it's bypassed right now. That's why I didn't hear it. I could push this really hard. Let's try that again. There it is. That's bass. I could do the Adam Neely voice. Bass. Um Sorry, I get sidetracked. <laughs> so that's the bass sound, and the bass is just going to lock in with the drums. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right, Norberto. <laughs> I, will, I will be using more and more silly words as the night goes on. I've already described the snare as floppy, so we're, uh, we're there. <laughs> so let's hear the bass and drums just kind of lock in a little bit. And we're getting to like the first major concept of funk, which is that bass and drums are your most important instruments and that they have to lock in rock solid. Um, no matter what, if your bass and your drummer aren't together, uh, in this case, they have the advantage of being the same person, which helps. Um, but if those two aren't locked in super tight, the whole rest of the song falls apart. Uh, so bass and drums are the absolute heart of this whole thing. Uh, let's take a listen to the... Uh, I actually want to skip the keyboards for a second. We're going to move on to guitars because these are so dead simple. I love it. Uh, this guitar part could not be a simpler mix. And that goes for all the guitars on this album. Thanks, Altair. That's a fun chord. Um, so, guitars, I did two things to them. I, I put the slightest, itty bittiest bit of EQ. You can see that's the only knob I touched on here. I made a little bit of cut in the highs. It probably didn't even make a difference. All I did to this guitar, there's no amp sim, there's no nothing. I took a guitar, I plugged it into the thing, 
into the interface, and I said, hey, I want to compress this. And I did. And look at all that compression happening. If I mute, if I bypass these effects, it's just a good sounding guitar. That's my, um, yeah, that's my Fender Telecaster. So that thing sounds great right out of the gate. I barely have to touch it. And with this, I wanted like this really dry, like bone dry, crispy guitar sound. So it's just super compressed, dry guitars. Uh, let's talk um, keys. The piano that plays the lead is really just a Native Instruments Maverick piano. Uh, I love this library. Playing a super simple piano part. Uh, I did not mess with the... I really tried not to touch the um, any of the melodies on this, not to mess with them in any way, just because it's. I really wanted to, to pay homage to the original songs. Uh, so this is just the dead simple piano melody, and then it's uh, super compressed, and that's literally all I did. Again, keeping it simple. Now, take a listen to what, so if you're not familiar with what a compressor does, it's like a volume knob that keeps everything in the same place. Sunflower dance. <laughs> um, so if things get too quiet, it turns the volume knob up. If things get too loud, it turns the volume knob down. That is a vast oversimplification of what it does, but on a practical level, that's all we need it to do. Um, and in this case, when you hit a piano key, bah, it dies out, right? But a compressor squishes that all to one level. So now you have the sound of a piano key dying out, but it stays the same volume, and it gets weird. Take a listen. I'm just going to play one note on a piano, and I'm really going to squash it. Or if I play a chord. You can hear how like this this weird richness comes out of it. It's so cool. So that's compressor on a piano, and that's what's happening there. Uh, I did that same compression to these keys as well, but I want to talk about the sounds I used for these two keyboards. This is the uh, the background keyboard that plays right from the very beginning. It goes like this. And this is one keyboard part. This is literally one piano part being played here. This is just a duplicate of it. Uh, I only played that part once. Once One is playing on uh, what's called a Wurlitzer piano, which is a, a type of piano that instead of having strings, it has little metal rods. And when those metal rods are struck or plucked, they make this little bow sound. Uh, it's this really cool twangy sound of a piano. So here's what that sounds like. And that's like one of the core sounds of Wolfpack music, which I was trying to emulate, is the uh, the, the Wurlitzer piano. Uh, doubling that exact part is the Sequential Circuits Prophet. Uh, this is a really cool synthesizer, and this is the sound I programmed on the Prophet for this one. It's just this funky, like, weird vintage sound. Uh, it's got this little wow, wow, every time you hit a key. Like, listen to it. Oh, come on. Oh, I have to play it over here. There we go. It's a really fun sound to play with. So I just layered it in there with the piano, with the electric piano. And uh, and finally, we have uh, we have a couple percussion tracks, but let's jump ahead to the sax. So here's Rich's awesome sax playing. And I have to give Richard credit. I gave him, like, no lead time on this. I sent him the sheet music, and then he came over, like, the next day, I think. And and we shot uh, 
all three of these tunes in like an hour and he killed it um with me like yelling at him to do things differently the whole time this this entire time he's he's here playing i am just to the left of the frame going like yeah that was that was great can we do it like this now can you try it like that and can you play this instead i know this isn't on the page but can you do this instead now and he just rolled with it he's great uh so for the saxophone i wanted um there's there's a few Wolfpack tunes that have used sax, uh, namely "Welcome to Wolf Records" and uh, "Daddy He Got a Tesla," um, which are ridiculous names for songs, <laughs> and a lot of them rely on uh, distorted saxophone. I'm just gonna take all these off, and you'll hear it, it as it was when we recorded. Great sound. Uh, I did a little bit of auto-tune, as I would with any acoustic instrument, because I'm a perfectionist and everything has to fit together perfectly. There's no statement about his intonation. He's a great player. Um, next, I had a gate on here, just to keep things clean. Remove any, like, breathing sounds in between or anything, because we were about to distort things, and any uh, extra sounds in there would get, like, brought up by the distortion, and I didn't want that. So... Here's uh here's Decapitator, which is a scary plugin. It's by Sound Toys, and it's just a really nice um, distortion plugin, a saturation plugin, I would call it, because it's not like a guitar distortion. It's like just kind of pushing something a little bit too far. So let's take a listen to what that's doing. And again, I could really push this, but that's too much. So that's good. Uh, we're compressing it with uh, VMR's uh, distressor again. And here's the real here's the real key. This is Echo Boy, also by Sound Toys, uh, and this is adding a little bit of a delay to the to the sound. See if you can catch it. Here's the original sound, and here's with the delay. It's so subtle, right? Here, I'll add more of them, and you'll hear it. And now without. It's cool, right? That's called a slapback echo because it slaps right back after you hit. Uh, micro shift. Also, I'm using a lot of sound toys today. Um, this adds some width to the sound. It's almost kind of a chorus effect. Let's listen to that. Here's what that sounds like really extreme. But again, keeping it subtle. And finally, a little bit of reverb. So that seems like a big, crazy effects chain just for one instrument. But I really wanted to to sell this vintage vibe. So I had to kind of layer in these, these different pieces to get that down. Finally, on the master track, we do have another instance of Wolf Compressor. This time doing the wow effect, which makes the pitch kind of waver up and down a little bit. And the lo-fi effect, which shaves off some of the highs. Uh, then I have it going into Vintage Limiter. I didn't actually use this when I was mixing. Um, this is just on now so we can hear it nice and loud. Uh, I would have left that off and then done that in the master, uh, which is in a different session later on. Cool. So, end audio talk. Now let's just talk about fun music stuff. <laughs> Let me know if anybody has any questions, though. I'm always happy to talk about it. So, uh, this song already has... Uh, I, I think I said it in the video description for the song. This already sounds like the genre I wanted to turn it into. It's so just fun and bouncy and catchy. Like, it's already there. I didn't change anything in, in the original. I mean, if you listen to the original song... I didn't change anything. I just played it on funky instruments. That's it. Uh, where the one thing I think I added to this song, um, in terms of playing, was the guitar part. And let's just talk about funky guitar for a second. Okay. So what I'm doing there 
is now plug in for this. Maybe you can hear it through the mic. Yeah, I'll plug in. Star Red Zone's your favorite? Yeah, I love that level. It's awesome. Uh... Nothing. Oh well. Yeah, I'm just going to launch my audio software. Um, but I can talk about the concept I'm going to talk about, which is... How's it going, Owen? Um, didn't mean for that to rhyme, sorry. <laughs> um, which is, uh, this is a funky guitar technique. Kind of goes back to, like, uh, Nile Rogers from Chic. Um, who was the guitar player on most recently would be like Get Lucky by uh, uh, Pharrell. Um, there it is. Okay. So, um, so this is, uh, this is what a lot of guitar players will call chunking or, um, or, or chicka chicka kind of guitars. And all I'm doing, I'm strumming 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And then I, wherever I feel rhythmically it should be, I actually fret the note and then I unfret the note. And what I mean is, yeah. <laughs> I think I just say, how's it going to everybody? And your name happens to rhyme with that. <laughs> what I mean by fretting and unfretting is actually physically pushing down the note and then unfretting by not leaving the guitar, but just releasing the pressure on that fret. So when I'm pushing down, it sounds like this. And when I'm not, it sounds like this, which gives us this sound. And that's all I'm doing. That is all funky guitar. And I learned that. Um, I played on a cruise ship for about a year. I played guitar. That was like my job for a year when I was like 20. And um, I played in specifically a pop funk cover band. And we played uh, so everything from Earth, Wind, and Fire, like... To Michael Jackson. to Bruno Mars, that's okay Alter, my name is Dean, um, so uh, yeah it does sound like Jamiroquai, there's a lot of good funky Jamiroquai, uh, so that is where I learned to get that stuff down, that is where I learned pretty much everything I know about funk these days, uh, I had to lock in with the drummer super tight, um, really awesome drummer in that band. And, uh, and that's where I learned all this stuff. But yeah, so I'm, I'm playing 16th notes and then fretting the note where I want it. Just kind of drop it in, drop it out. Or. And eventually you start getting comfortable enough to miss the strings here and there. And that's where you get those longer notes, like. The Trolls soundtrack. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, we, I, I, not kidding, we did. We played, um, I got this feeling up in my bones. That one. Yeah, I love that song. That's a really good song. <laughs> yes, Dean. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's funk guitar and that's what I'm doing throughout 
all of this. As far as the chords I'm actually playing, I'm doing a few different things depending on the song. Let's check out this tune. Um, in this one, let's see. I don't remember. This was a year ago, so let's see what I did. Let me bring this back up so it's loud again. That caught his attention? Good. <laughs> I remember the year that came out. I was I was teaching a lot of students that year, and I taught that to so many kids when Trolls came out. <laughs> so I know that song very well. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Al Tokov. It's like everybody's locked into the 16th note. Uh, the as long as everybody's on the 16th note grid, you can get away with almost anything. You can play, there'll be times where like, I will be playing absolute nonsense, but as long as I'm on the 16th note grid, I'm locked in and everybody's good. How's it going, Zero Runner? Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so the left guitar is playing this, um, my guitar back in there there we go so the left guitar is playing the chords that are going on it's just c d minor e minor and then f major seven i think so i'm just doing that just walking up and then the other guitar i wanted something contrasting with it yeah you're absolutely right tom it's it's a real headache. <laughs> okay, so this guitar is doing something simple to contrast it. Uh, instead of following the chords, it's only playing one note. Just hanging out on a C the entire time. So we actually get like this sound. Can I do it? Can I do it? Like that kind of thing. There's this like multi-chord thing happening. Hey Thomas, sometimes it's the simplest things. That's all you need. <laughs> well yeah, the wah pedal, that'll do it. <laughs> so that is uh that is one huge, huge element of funk, uh instrumentally speaking. The other one is of course what I'm doing on the bass. So let's check out the bass. Yeah, Victor, it's it's so hard to get away with doing something different in each in each like doubled track and metal, because um, er, there is such a a balance that's required in metal music. But funk, you can get away with so much more, and I love it. Um, I'm like, honestly, outside of this channel, I don't play that much metal. I don't play metal gigs. I play funk and pop and jazz gigs. Like, if you knew me in real life, you would not think I was a metalhead unless you saw what I was listening to on Spotify or you saw my YouTube channel. Uh, so 90% of my life is funk. <laughs> That's why I, I love doing this stuff here and there. Um, so yeah, let's, let's check out the bass. And this is going to be, believe it or not, a similar concept. Uh, the bass kind of bridges the gap between the guitar and the, the drums. Okay. Yes, Alto Cliff. Got a slap. But not on this song. I actually didn't slap that much on this one. Did I? I slapped on the solo to Chemical Plant, which we'll get to in a second. But um, but really not much on the rest of the album. Yeah, it's mostly mostly just fingers for this one. And um, as as uh, who said it? Alto Clef. Yeah, you said it's all about the one and jamming. Yeah, and especially it's about the one. So you'll you'll hear me you'll hear me hit this big one on each measure. One. One. 
So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. It's always a big note. Altair, way too much. Way too much work. <laughs> it's all I do. And yes, I agree, Tom. It's awesome. So um, I love sitting at this really weird angle so it can all be in frame. This is not comfortable. Um, so I'm doing two things. Like I said, I'm hitting on the one, so I lock in with the kick drum and the drum set. But then I'm I'm playing this funky rhythm, this... And if you notice, just before every big hit, I do a muted pluck. I'll do this really slowly. There's all this stuff going on in there. And that's like the same thing that's going on with the chuck chucka chucka thing in the guitars. And that's what takes it from... Which is fine, but not as good as... It's, it's that little bit of extra funk, it's really hard to play at this angle, um, that takes it to that next level. That's what I really enjoyed about this. Um, also, I'm doing really staccato notes at the top. You'll hear me, it almost sounds like a pop, like this. But I'm not doing that. It's a really fast, really hard pluck on the octave note, the top note. And then as soon as I pluck it, literally right in the same motion, I take my finger up and release the tension. So you get this really staccato, really funky sound. And that is the bass part on this. Um, so yeah, that is Starlight Zone. I'm going to leave it there for that one, and let's move on to the next track. Oh, and the camera died again. What's happening, folks? I have a feeling it's some kind of automatic timer thing that's going off, and we're back. Yes. It's not running out of battery or anything, clearly. So, <laughs> so let's wait for Pro Tools to load. Uh, this next track is Chemical Plant Zone. Yes, it is cursed. You're absolutely right. <laughs> this is Chemical Plant Zone uh, from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is, this is such like a long time request. Everybody has been asking me to do this one for the longest time. And the truth is I was trying to do it for the longest time. I have tried so many times to cover this song. Uh, I, I have, it, it's like, like a bunch of failed experiments sitting in, in my basement is, is what this song is. There's a bunch of session files that just never made it. Uh, there was like really bad metal versions of this and all kinds of stuff that I tried to do on this that really never came close to working. Uh, and thank you, Tyler. Thanks everybody. Um, and so when it came time to do this album, um, which I'll, I'll tell you kind of how I came up with this album in a couple tracks. Uh, this one, it, it was finally a good chance to do Chemical Plant. <laughs> All right, Norberto, I'll see you later. Feel free to watch the rest of this later. It'll be up on YouTube. Um, so, you did? Yeah, man, it's a hard song to cover. It really is. Uh, so this one... Uh, we talked about kind of how Conscious Club by Wolfpack influenced the last track, Starlight Zone. This one, if anything, is really uh, influenced by Wolfpack's song, Corey Wong. If you listen to the intro of that, uh, there's this, this thing, there's this dual guitar. I don't actually know how to play it, but that was kind of close. There's this really fun two guitar part. So I, I envisioned pulling that same thing off for this. And here's how that went. one also 
also features Rich on sax. So I won't I won't play this whole thing. Uh, I want to skip ahead to the bass solo because that's kind of a interesting part of the tune. Cool. So that's that's essentially the song. There's not like that much content in the tune to work from so i had to play around with the arrangement a bit to get it to last all three minutes um and yeah the clavinet is is my f it's probably my favorite instrument i couldn't like just play clavinet but it's so unique and so cool and when you get it right it's just the coolest thing in the world and thanks altair yeah the, the little sunglasses me i wanted something really stupid and silly for one of these so that was my that was my really silly thing i just set up my iphone on on like a stand and i just Tried to keep a straight face while I clapped into it, and I had fun. Um, so yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the arrangement of this tune. Like I said, it starts off with this two guitar part. Uh, one guitar is just playing. This is an F sharp minor seven chord. Uh, one guitar is just playing the upper half of the chord, and the other guitar is just playing the lower half. So we get and for a total of and it, it adds up nicely uh, I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret these parts and <laughs> these guitars are fake <laughs> and by that I mean uh, on this track that is not my Telecaster featured and that is not my Dan Electro featured uh, it's actually both of them both tracks you hear on the record are my Carvin uh, this one and that's because I didn't want to show the Carvin on the album, so I wanted to use just my Telly and the Dano for, for this record. So I recorded them, I shot the video, I mixed it, and I hated it. I had done the demos with the Carvin, and I'd been listening to that for like three weeks. Dean DeMarso on the Squire bass. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'd been, I'd been listening to these demos with the Carvin for weeks, so I was like about to send off the record to Spotify and iTunes and everything. And I was listening to it, and I was like, God, I just hate the guitars. And I switched them back to the demo tracks that I'd done before. Uh, I don't feel bad about it, because this wasn't like a super technical, shreddy thing where I would feel like I was cheating or anything. But just a little fun fact, I'm faking, technically, both those guitar parts. I really like this snare part. Uh, this bass part, um, if you listen to that low note, the that low note is an E, f uh, it's an E flat, which you can't play on a four string bass. So this entire bass is actually tuned a half step down for this one song, and it really messed with me. Um, really fun part to play though. Uh, this drum track, dead simple, literally just a, a four on the floor groove. That later turns into a disco beat. And all the while is augmented by these claps. And there are, let's count them, six clap tracks. Let's listen to them. I 
I don't think I actually recorded all those clap tracks. If I remember, I pretty much set up a microphone, went like this. And then edited them together into like a bunch of clap tracks. Megadeth songs are a quarter toned down. Yes, you're right. I remember trying to play along to those and being like, what? What do I tune to? Why? Why would you do this? So yeah, the clap tracks, whoops, combined with the drum tracks is like just the essence of funk. I love it. And then here's the real key. This is my secret weapon on every single song I do. I kid you not, literally 95% of songs um, is uh, feature a tambourine track. It's way back there, but it's there. I've used this on metal songs. I've used this on country songs. I use the tambourine everywhere. I use this specific tambourine loop that I got from Splice like three years ago everywhere. Uh, did I consider putting bits of the Generations or Mania versions of this in? I, I'll be honest. I've been listening to the, uh, the original Sonic 2 version of this for 25 years. And I've heard the Mania and Generations version a couple times. And uh, the original is always going to be the best version. T. Lopes did like an incredible job remixing these songs for Sonic Mania, and I love them. I just haven't heard them as much as the original, so the original is like the only version for me. Generations was cool. Uh, the modern version of this song was really weird. Um, though I did kind of reference it a little bit when we did that Synthwave remix of the song a couple weeks ago. I kind of had a little bit of that in mind. Um, yeah, so that's that's the percussion section here. Um, bass is really simple. I'm only ever playing uh, F sharp, E, E flat. Or sorry, if you want to be enharmonically correct, it would be uh, D flat, F flat, or sorry, G flat, F flat, E flat. That's terrible. Don't think of it like that. What metal songs did I put tambourine on? Um, oh man, I want to say, I want to say it's in, you're going to have to find it. I don't remember, <laughs> but they're in there. Believe me, they're in there. Uh, and they're definitely in this new album. There's a couple super dancey metal songs that I'm working on right now. Uh, they're going to be a riot. There's one Undertale song that has, it's the catchiest, danciest thing I've ever heard. I love it. Um, the, uh, the guitars we already talked about, they don't really get more interesting than that. It pretty much plays that one loop the entire time. Uh, the clav. So the clavinet is a really weird, wild um, instrument. Oh, real quick, Victor, for an example of a great metal song with tambourine in it, uh, Dance Macabre by Ghost is so awesome and metal and catchy and silly and i love it go check out ghost in general if you haven't uh, dance macabre and rats are two of like my favorite songs ever uh, so the clav the clav is a keyboard instrument uh, let's see if this has a picture of one not really um i'm only doing this because this is not an instrument people talk about often but yeah this is the honer clavinet uh which is a um it's a keyboard instrument with uh, strings inside, like a piano, but they are um, they're plucked like a guitar. Imagine a guitar keyboard is what a clav is, uh, and it sounds. Hang on, let me get rid of these. The reason I get rid of these is because they cause a lot of latency. Um, let's see if I can. Uh, Okay, so yeah, that is, um, this is the clavinet. It's got this really funky sound. It's the sound of Stevie Wonder's Superstition. And Higher Ground. And, uh, and all kinds of fun stuff. I got to know it with, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I got to know it from, uh, 
Stevie Wonder tunes, but also um, some Led Zeppelin, uh, Trampled Underfoot. Oh, can I play this? Hang on, there's so much latency. I'm playing it like a second before you hear it, and it's messing with my head. Um, and some Red Hot Chili Peppers tunes. Uh, Warlocks by the Chili Peppers off Stadium Arcadium has some really funky clav in it, so that's like where I got to know it. Uh, who are my main funk influences? Red Hot Chili Peppers, um, Wolfpack, Jamiroquai, Earth, Wind, and Fire, um, Michael Jackson, uh, Jackson 5, all that stuff. Every every funky Motown record from the 70s, every uh, you know catchy pop record from the 80s, and everything the Red Hot Chili Peppers did <laughs> is, is, is my funk influences. Um, and then Wolfpack. Woo! Oh gosh, that's so loud. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, Finn. <laughs> that scared me. Okay. Um, so yeah, the clav on this one is, is playing the, uh, there's a part in the background, there's a synth part that goes. I can't play with this much latency, it's messing with my head. So I'm just going to let the, this thing play it for you. And the key to the clav is to play percussively, like slapping your hands back and forth. It looks ridiculous. It's it's totally silly, but it's really, really effective and funky when you get it right. I remember a, a, this classically trained pianist at college. He's a good friend of mine now, but um, he... The first night we played on a gig together, I was playing this funky clav stuff. And he was like, what? What are you doing? Why would you? How does that sound good? Because <laughs> it looks ridiculous. And yeah, you're right, Owen. It sounds like a, it's 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 like a video gamey kind of thing. It's weird. Yeah, I'm with you all, Tara. I'm, I'm mostly on the older Sonic games. Uh, so yeah, that's most of what's going on here. There's a little build coming out of the chorus where where the clav plays a part and then the guitar plays a part and then another guitar plays a part and it builds like this. Just to hear that build, just the clav soloed. fun part and then you hear rich just screaming this high sax note over top of it super funky uh let's talk about the bass solo for one second um this is, uh, I, I honestly approach this bass solo the way I would approach a, a guitar solo. It's, uh, it's all just F sharp minor pentatonic. So. Oh, I did it down there. Yeah. Now, one thing I will note about this album, this the bass for this entire album, uh, like I said, I took it home the day we got it in. What I failed to realize was it was not set up yet, and it was not set up for New York's climate. So I tracked this entire album with action like this high off the neck, and my wrist was killing me by the end of it. So I think this solo would have been a lot better if I didn't have to get the tracks done that day, because I, I was setting like a really strict deadline for myself, and I waited to set up the bass. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the lick there. And again, I'm doing those little slaps and pops in between to take up the space, take up that 16th note chunking space, just like we did on the guitar in Starlight Zone. Um, it's just it's just keeping that 16th note pulse going. Uh, the next lick, let's see.
Okay, so this is this really fun octave chromatic climb. So, pop, slap, slide. Really fun. Uh, some, just a nice simple, played with fingers, uh, shreddy line. <laughs> That's such like a guitar line of mine. I would play that in like every solo. That kind of thing. And then finally just ended off with a low note. And then we're back around. So. That's Chemical Plant. Uh, take a look at the end. There's one other weird, fun thing I did. Uh, I really wanted to sell this ending, really make it like explode. So I did this weird thing to the saxophone. Uh, let's take a listen. Here's the original sax track. <laughs> if you if you notice something really weird about it, it sounded like it was like falling apart for a second, then it came back together. Here's what's happening. Uh, here's my usual crazy um, chain. And this is uh, Sound Toy's Little Alter Boy, which is a really strange name for a plugin, but it alters the sound. Uh, specifically, it shifts the pitch or the formant, which is like the ow, wow kind of sound. Uh, I don't think I messed with the formant too much, but I did shift the pitch. Watch. I just dipped it down a little bit, almost like he was really exaggerating his bend and also like shifting into another dimension at the same time. It was really fun. Uh, and then I duplicated it, and I don't remember what I did to it. Let's find out. Oh, I did that. <laughs> I shifted it up an octave and made it sound really weird. Like this, combined. And that just helped sell the ending, helped make it really extreme. <laughs> Also did these really fun like 30 second notes on the snare drum. Uh, that's a rudiment called a herta, H-E-R-T-A. Really fun to play uh, and really helps like ramp up an ending. Super fun. Uh, cool. On to the next. So next up is Green Hill Zone. This is the first of two covers of Green Hill Zone on this same album because I just couldn't help myself. It's it's just the best song. Um, and this is the third time I've covered Green Hill Zone overall. So, or one of three times, rather. And, uh, and this is a really subdued, chill take on it. Uh, we've been talking about the Wolfpack influence on this. Uh, the song that influenced this the most was 1612. 1612 by Wolfpack. Thanks, Owen. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. <laughs> they, they've covered this more than I have. I, I can't say I've played, I've, I've remade Green Hill Zone as many times as Sega has. But, um, yeah. The fact that they put it in Sonic Forces was just too much. They had just done it in Generations. Just move on, man. Um, but, uh, and in Mania, really, it really is too many times, isn't it? Anyway, uh, this was this was meant to be my take on 1612 by Wolfpack, which has this really fun uh, guitar and bass line interacting with each other. Let's take a listen. <laughs> I never will, don't worry. Thank you. 
you know this song. <laughs> There's a little drum break in the middle that I had fun with. Yes, yeah, super chill. I played most of the drums on this album, traditional grip, which means, uh, I don't have any sticks out here. Oh, I don't have anything even stick shaped. That's a bummer. It's, oh, pen. Uh, so instead of holding a drumstick like this, like you're whacking it like this, um, I, I hold it like this, almost like, like you might hold a pencil kind of, but between your, your ring and middle finger. Uh, and this is, this is called traditional grip. And it just kind of helped me get the sound and also kind of the look I was going for of this like vintage style. Um, growing up, I played a lot of traditional left hand uh, match. Right hand matches like the standard grip. Um, so I played right hand match, left hand traditional a lot growing up. That's how my dad plays. Uh, and I learned from him. So that, that kind of all came out. These days I play mostly match both hands when I'm playing like rock and metal stuff. But every once in a while I'll switch to traditional because it's easier on my wrist. Uh, so yeah, let's go through track by track on this. Most of this song, uh, the the groove is built on this interaction between the drums, the bass, and the guitar. And you can see how little is going on in this song. There's really not that many tracks. So I'm, I'll be honest, I'm literally ripping off Wolfpack with that. It's the exact same kind of groove, uh, but I really, really loved it. So I had fun adding that to this. Um, there's a really simple electric piano part going on top of this. Kept it dead simple. And then, yeah, you're absolutely right. The friest fry of all fries. Sounds delicious. Uh, yeah, it's this is... One of my favorite, I, I tried to showcase a lot of weird instruments on this. This is something called a Mellotron. We're doing a lot of weird keyboard history. Um, the Mellotron is a keyboard instrument. Uh, real quick, what VST did I use for the electric piano? Uh, it's, whoop, where is it? Here we go. It's Native Instruments Scarby Retro Keys, or Vintage Keys. Uh, it's the A200 model. It's a Wurlitzer. So a Mellotron... I'll show you a picture of one. Is that an actual picture? I want a real one. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is a Mellotron, and it is a keyboard instrument that, if you can imagine a piano... Oh, I have it off screen. Shoot. Sorry. There we go. It's a keyboard instrument that, if you can imagine a piano, but instead of the strings, there are, are reels of tape, like of, of cassette tape. Uh, and when you press a key it sends a playhead down that tape and plays back the sound on that that line of tape almost like a, an old school sampler uh, like like a sampler before samplers were possible before you had digital sampling like we have you had mellotrons which would come with these big cartridges so you had your flute cartridge that you drop in and it would play the flute sounds or your choir or your strings and in this case yeah we're using flutes and it sounds just so like so cool. It's just so nice, right? Isn't it just weird? Um, it's also, I mean, you probably know it best from uh, it's stairway, right? And 
yeah, Genesis, Beatles, it, it was all over the place. I knew it best from Stairway or from live performances of Stairway, at least I think on the record they were real flutes. But um, but yeah, that, that just conjures up that sound for me, and I love it. Uh, so yeah, I used that for the, uh, the melody on this, which is, uh, you all know... It's just, it fit this perfectly. Now for the next part, I have a piano played octaves. Do we have a no stairway sign in our music store? No, no, believe it or not, we're, we're mostly a woodwind music store like woodwinds and brass, uh, so we just have a no giant steps sign. <laughs> we don't, but we should. That would be funny. <laughs> um, here's that piano line. That's this really subtle thing in the background of the original Green Hill Zone. It's, it's way back there. Uh, and finally, some vibraphone comes in. to kind of play the melody in this bridge section. Let's see if it turns back on. Sometimes it looks like it's going to turn back. Oh, it just turns back on. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's the vibes. And finally, we have this. Uh, this is a mini Moog synthesizer. Just doing this. That. <laughs> it's fun. You can see how far back I have that mixed. <laughs> Look at that. So, that's nice. And yeah, that's the song. That's Green Hill Zone. Moving on. Okay, this is one of my favorite tracks coming up. This is um, City Escape, or Escape from the City, depending on who you ask. I think the song is called Escape from the City, dot, 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 for City Escape, is how they title all the songs on that album. And thanks. That's that's your favorite cover of me. Thank you so much. Um, this is this is one of my favorites that I've done. Uh, so this is actually the song that started this whole album for me. I was I was on a train. I was in the city with my wife. We were hanging out for our anniversary, and um, actually no, it would have been earlier than that. So it was probably her birthday. Uh, yeah, we were in the city for some reason, and uh, in, in like spring. And, uh, and I was reading a book, we were on the train coming back, I was reading a book, uh, the, the autobiography of Scott Bradley, the guy who um, started Postmodern Jukebox. Really cool band doing like vintage style covers of pop songs. And, uh, and I was reading it and the whole time I was just getting inspired, getting super psyched. He talked about how one of his first big gigs he threw together a band to do Motown covers of Nickelback songs, and he sold out a show doing that. I was like, that's weird and silly. Uh, what if I did that with Sonic songs? And the whole thing, the gears just started turning. And the first song, I, I like wrote the entire arrangement for this in my head on the ride home. Um, and uh, and yeah, Postmodern Jukebox, they're awesome. Thanks, Ant-Man. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this whole thing just popped into my head, especially this intro. It, it all just like came fully formed to me right out the gate. So here's, uh, here's City Escape. Let's check it out. It does sound like Ghostbusters.
yeah, that was so, so, so much fun. Um, this might be like my favorite thing I've ever recorded. I love this. I'm super proud of it. I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, this is a rare example of me singing on my YouTube channel. There's only like a handful of tunes I've done where I sing. Uh, but I actually do sing a lot in, in like my day-to-day -day music work. Uh, while I was in the cruise ship, I had to sing a lot. Um, when I joined the cruise ship, I had played with this band on land before. And it was it was me on guitar. We had a keyboard player, drummer, uh, and then three singers, three girls up front singing. And the keyboard player also sang. Incredible singer. He's the band leader. Um, and then we got to the cruise ship, and I walk on stage, and it's me and the keyboard player, and the drummer, and one girl. And the keyboard player turns to me, and he goes, so what are you singing tonight? <laughs> I said, what? Excuse me? He's like, oh man, there's only three of us. You're going to have to sing. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and and I ended up singing a ton with that band, and that's like where I got comfortable singing. Uh, I had kind of done some singing in college with bands, but I was never really like a lead singer. And that's where I got comfortable doing it was on the cruise ship. We played 200 nights in a row and, uh, and I, I had to get comfortable. So, um, so I kind of have, uh, thanks Fry. Um, so I kind of have like three voices. Uh, one is, is like my main regular, like rock voice. You'll hear that on like the Drake Bell cover I did or happy. If you go really far back, you'll hear me sing happy or power Rangers, any of that stuff. That's like my, my attempt at like a, a rock or punk voice. And it's really limited. I have like this baritone level voice. I'm not a tenor. I can't sing like high rock stuff. So I'm limited to like this kind of useless baritone range. Um, my real comfortable voice where I sang in choir in high school was as a bass. So I can sing these really low notes and super comfortable down there. Uh, if you watch, I posted a little while on here. Um, I was in a production of Jesus Christ Superstar where I played Caiaphas, who's who's a, a, like a super low bass voice part. And that was fun because that's like the one part in the world that's written for basses besides Hades Town. Um, so I was super psyched to get that play that part. And then the third thing I can do is this silly high voice thing, which has never, ever, ever come in handy until I started listening to Wolfpack. And Theo Katzman has this super high voice uh, when he's singing like Back Pocket or, um, how's it going, Razor? Yeah, when Theo Katzman's singing Back Pocket or uh, Christmas in LA, he's got this super high voice singing up in his falsetto. And I was so psyched when I heard it because I was like, oh God, finally, it's something I can actually kind of do. Um, and so I, I sang a lot in this this super high voice on this one. Um, I'm, I'm really excited I got to do that. So yeah, let's talk through the instruments first. And I'll talk a lot about the vocal arranging because you can see there's a ton of vocal tracks in this. Uh, let's talk about the drums first. It's the usual. A lot of dance beat on this, a lot of 16th note hi-hat, doing that same 16th note pulse we were talking about earlier. Uh, just locks everything together, gives everybody a nice ruler to play to. Uh, this bass line was so much fun. You know you know the, the bass line that starts City Escape. It's that, uh, it's in B. Um, so I was like, I don't want to slap that much on this album. I want to play mostly finger style stuff. So let's make that funky. Like that's fun. Uh, and then I realized I couldn't sing it in B. So I moved it up to D. And you'll notice I'm doing a ton of bass fills on this because it's such a fun key to play in. Why is... Oh, yeah. Um, so, super fun part. Let's hear that bass and drum lock in. And then, believe it or not, the rest of this song, 
I am almost playing the original bass line note for note. Uh, this, this thing. He's really doing that on the original record. It's just like slapped instead. And then I got to the uh, the pre-chorus. That's almost note for note. I think I added that uh, that little slide fill in there. But other than that, just going note for note from the original record. Here's the one thing I really did change. Uh, there's there's the chorus bass line. The uh, where is it? That really fun, like, slidey bass line, that's all note for note from the original. And when Rich, uh, I showed Rich a little bit of this while he was recording the other sax tracks. I showed him some of this one while I was working on it. He's like, is that in the original song? I was like, yeah, dude, it's all there. It's a crazy song. Uh, but I wanted things to drop down first. So I did this little climb up here instead. Just had some fun with that. So that's the bass part. I don't think there's guitar on this song, is there? No, there's no guitar on this. This is the one song without any guitar on it, which is wild. This is like the only song I've ever put up without any guitar. That's weird. Taste of Honey. Yes, dude. Boogie Woogie Oogie. Boogie Oogie Oogie. I forget how what exactly the title is that. But yeah, that's another huge, huge example of um, great, great uh, funk guitar. That... Uh, That's one I played like 40,000 times on the cruise ship, uh, along with Bad Girls. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of disco now, guys. <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, the keyboards, nothing crazy. I'm really just playing the chords. Although I did do a couple things that add some really nice atmosphere. You'll catch it in the piano, uh, in the acoustic piano, the real one. I don't know if you could see the MIDI written here. Kind of gives you the outline of what's happening in each one. Watch closely when we get to this region right here. Here comes this piano part. It's nothing crazy. Just octave C's, or D's, sorry, we're in the key of D. Uh, this is something I grabbed from Wolfpack's Conscious Club. Uh, there's a really great piano part holding down an octave up high that just really locks it all in. Uh, and I do it again here. And then I do the same idea, but with a whole chord. just literally held one chord. It wasn't even the chord the whole band was playing. Just a D major chord. While the chords are actually going G, A, D, B minor. And then it changes to B major for a second. Then it goes back. Really fun piano parts. Um, went back to the octave thing. I did not make it complicated here. You notice we have a Mellotron coming in in a second. This is going to be a string Mellotron. Check it out. Really fun part. Uh, tying this whole track together is a bongo loop. 
<laughs> and I really wanted to record live bongos on this, but I don't have a set. And uh, the only pair I knew of was at work, and I couldn't get there when I was recording this. Uh, so... That's just going on in the background this whole time. Along with, of course, a tambourine. So, that's an element I use literally everywhere, the tambourine. Uh, and the bongo just like, I don't know why it works so, oh, it's because I was ripping off Conscious Club by Wolfpack, that's why, and there's a bongo in that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's talk about vocals. So, like I said before, I'm doing this high, kind of high-pitched, let me get some water. <clears throat> that kind of like, I don't care what lies ahead. That really high falsetto voice, like Bee Gees kind of thing. Um, and when it's solo, it sounds okay, you know, ah, but it's, it's not like present like it needs to be. Like, here's what just one vocal sounds like doing this. Take a listen. I agree, Landon. Those are my favorites too. So here's just one vocal. And hang on, I'm actually still cheating. Let's take the fun effects off of there. Like, it's okay, but it's not, it's not what it needs to be. So, some echo, uh, and these are the exact same part sung three different times. Here's one. Rolling around. Here's another. Rolling around. And a third one. Rolling around. And when you put them together, you get this nice layered vocal. Rolling around at the speed of sound. And that is a lot more usable. Um, so to walk you through the insane amount of vocals I have here, the first one is the lead, the second two are dub tracks, doubled, uh, and they go the entire song. They do not let go of the lead vocal. I did every single line three times. Then I have selective doubling, adding a fourth and fifth track on top of that. So you, just to kind of emphasize a few lines, like, follow my rainbow, that line gets an extra, extra double. Take a listen. Rolling around at the speed of sound Got places to go, got to follow my rainbow It just gets a little bigger there, emphasizes it. Uh, then we have harmonies. So harmonies are anywhere that the vocal is singing a different part than the lead vocal. So the lead vocal, vocal is singing One way to find out And the harmonies are singing One way to find out Really high. <laughs> And look at this, there's a lot of harmony tracks on this. So we got one vocal singing, one way to find out. And then we got the higher one doing, one way to find out. And then I think it went lower for the third harmony. Let's listen to that. One way to find out. Never mind, I doubled that same harmony. Did I go lower here? One way to find out. Yeah, lower. One way to find out. And all together, that makes this really cool stacked vocal harmony it's only three parts but it sounds huge because it's literally 11 tracks One way to find out. really fun um same thing goes over here take my lid i'll set you free just a little high harmony there set you free I think I had some extra low harmonies planned at some point. Like here's a low octave harmony I was gonna do. Rolling around at the speed of sound. Got places to go, got to follow my rainbow. I didn't end up using that, so that was muted down here. What's this one? This is either gonna be terrible or I should have used it. Let's see. Oh yeah, that is in there. Okay, so <laughs> this very last one, um, I really wanted to go absolutely wild with the harmonies. 
So I stacked an extra one, extra super high that I literally only sang once. I tried to do it again in the car earlier today and I can't do it anymore. But there's a super, super high note here. Check it out. So here's the normal harmony. Get me free. Trust me and we will escape from the city. And then I added one really, really high one. I'll push it forward. Get me free. Get me free. Trust me and we will escape from the city. Super high. We will escape from the city. Little bit auto-tuned, because <laughs> I can't really get up there that well. So yeah, I kind of snuck that in the back. Uh, yeah, to talk through my vocal chain real quick, uh, my effects on the vocals, because this is the only one with vocals that I released. We'll get to that in a second. Um, I have the Aosis de -er. So this is catching any time I have sibilance in my voice. Psss, or st, any of those sounds. Uh, this latches onto it and pulls it back. Says, hey, hang on, buddy. Let me free, trust me and we will escape from the city. You can see where it's clamping down on the S's and T's. That helps a lot. Uh, next, we have uh, VMR, Virtual Mix Rack, boosting the highs a bit and compressing the heck out of it as usual. Let me free, trust me and we will escape from the city. If you've never used a distressor before or a compressor in general, anything that's labeled GR or gain reduction is showing you how much compressing is happening, how much it's squashing the sound. Uh, after that is Decapitator, adding a little bit of crunch to the vocals. Let me free, trust me and we will escape. It is subtle. And finally, Echo Boy doing that same slap back we talked about earlier on the saxophone back in Starlight Zone. Uh, then on the vocals as a whole, I have micro shift, which is just adding some width again. Uh, I have an extra de -esser just really pushing it because I still felt like there was some too much sibilance going on. So I, I added one doing overall. Uh, I cut a little bit of the high mids, boost the highs, just kind of shaping the sound here. This is uh, Slate FG Gray. This is, um, a, a, I believe it's an imitation of a SSL uh, bus compressor. So I'm just kind of compressing all the vocals together a little bit. This is this should probably be subtle. Let's take a listen to with and without this. Yeah, I'm pretty much just keeping all the vocals in the same kind of level, not doing anything drastic here. L1 is a limiter, just making sure it doesn't get too loud. Some reverb. Uh, this is kind of a cool trick. This is S1 Imager by um, Waves. Set me free. Let's go somewhere less active. Set me free. And this is widening things a little bit. Not by much. Let's take a listen. Set me free. Trust me. Just pushes things out to the ears a little bit. Subtle stuff is the name of the game with this. Uh, yeah, and that's City Escape. That's a really, really fun track that I had so much... So much fun with. Uh, on to Sky Sanctuary. Everybody having fun so far? Any questions about any of the music production stuff we're talking about? Please let me know. Uh, so next up is Sky Sanctuary from Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, this is the second to last level of Sonic and Knuckles just before the Death Egg Zone. Um, so it's not one I reached often as a kid. I loved Sonic, but I wasn't super good at it. <laughs> um... But I got there a lot with the level select code. I like the cheat codes and the debug mode. I had fun with that. Um, so yeah, Sky Sanctuary plays uh, towards the end of the game. Or barely at all. If you're playing as Knuckles, you're there for like two seconds before the final boss battle. And uh, I wasn't really sure where to go with this one. This one came to me literally right at the end of the project. I think days before I, I sent this out. I uh, Nope, not yet, Ant-Man Felix. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Prince's falsetto vocals are like amazing and ridiculous uh no i haven't done hydrosity that's in like two tracks i think that's track seven or eight um so uh this song i added right at the end um i sent the final record to rich to listen to the sax player um and he's like wait you did sky, uh, you did sky sanctuary and i'm like yeah i did that today because <laughs> i i just slammed this in at the very end of the arrangements 
um, because I was not... I was not expecting to do this, and it just came to me like, Ooh, I should do this. It would sound like this. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, so here's Sky Sanctuary. Let's check it out. Or Hydro City. You're right. This doesn't go anywhere really else other than that because there's not much to work with in this tune. Just had a little ending here. Yeah. Nice little ending. Ant-Man Felix, I think he was picking on my pronunciation of it, not your spelling. I said hydrosity, which is how I've always read the word. But Hydro City is probably also an equally valid interpretation of it. Have they come out with an official pronunciation on it? <laughs> I would love to know. Uh, so yeah, this is a super upbeat, dancey take on this tune. Um, this song is like... It's, it's not like an upbeat song. If we listen to it real quick... Oh, don't play an ad. Yeah, HBO Max. It looks cool. Great. Are they going to have Justice League? Anyway. Um, wait for it. Sky Sanctuary. It's kind of like majestic and epic, but it's not dancing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's sounds like you're flying through the clouds, which you are. Oh, thank you for the Russian pronunciation, Altair. <laughs> uh, just listen to the bridge because I really messed with that. So, not much like texturally is happening here. Uh, it's just there. It's the same instruments playing. Still going. It's cool. Hydro City. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. I'm really interested in the in the global like print like I can't believe we're talking about how to pronounce a Sonic the Hedgehog level in every language. That's so cool to me. I love YouTube. <laughs> so so yeah, there's this is this was a fun challenge as a song because there's frankly very little going on in the original arrangement. Um and so I, I took it kind of bare bones down to just the chord progression and the melody and that's it and i just went from there so we got this uh oh usually it grabs all the drums okay we have a bass line and uh, a piano line that kind of sets the the tone here so we'll just listen to those for a second So I'm just doing octaves in the left hand of the roads. What key is this in? Just walking down that. And then playing the melody in my right hand. Oh, how do you play this? my camera do that come back i'm back okay i'll fix that later <laughs> didn't do that last time um so uh i get so distracted by that oh yeah one interesting thing about this uh, i recorded the roads i only recorded it once 
but I um, I separated the part into two separate tracks that I can mix separately just for like leveling purposes. I thought that was interesting. Uh, yeah, there's not a ton going on this. There's a funky guitar part. And I, I just kind of made that up from scratch. That's not a reflection of anything in the original song. Um, again, just using that same, same funky approach. And then moving to an octave. When in doubt, just layer something playing an octave on quarter notes and it'll sound cool in funk music. Both guitars are playing the exact same part. Uh, the right hand of the Rhodes is being doubled by, where is it? Is it here? Ah, yes. Uh, is being doubled by this piano um, bell mixture. This is something I use a lot. This is actually something I use a lot when I write mute music for like TV shows or movies and this is um, this is kind of like who wrote this it was prop uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles had a lot of composers there's a good chance it was John Sino uh, who is who's the current composer for the Sonic series um, and I'm just an absolute hero of mine uh, I don't think anybody's super clear on who wrote what in these games. Uh, there's just usually a long list of composers on this. Uh, we do know Michael Jackson was involved for a lot of uh, a lot of Sonic Three, though, which is interesting. So this is a piano playing layered with a Glockenspiel. This bell kit. Let's listen to just the bells, and it adds just this nice shimmery tone. To the sound. It's really cool. So as we get to the bridge for this one, I wonder who wrote Ice, Co uh, Ice Cap Zone. That's, um, I can't remember his name. You know, though. One of, one of the composers. I'll tell you the story about Ice Cap Zone after this. Uh, yeah, Copan, the Jetsons. Um, uh, Brad Buxer was um, one of the composers on Sonic, I believe. Um, and he, he just grabbed one of his songs and dropped it in there because it was awesome. That's I Ice Cap Zone. Uh, and yeah, Carnival Night Zone uses uh, a sample from Michael Jackson's Jam. If you go listen to Jam, you'll hear the end of the chorus. And it's that pop 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 pow and of course, there's Michael Jackson samples all over the game. Um, so yeah, this bridge, I had no idea what to do to get here when I got here. Uh, so I was like, what if I just changed the whole genre, changed everything about it, and just like, like pumped the brakes and shifted the whole thing. And I got this really weird bridge. And here's what's happening there. We have three guitars, one playing the melody, One playing a harmony, and another harmony. When you put it all together, you get this. Yeah, Stranger in Moscow is is the credit song. You're right. That's a good catch, too. Um, yeah, there's so much Michael Jackson all over that game. Uh, so, and finally, I didn't find, I wasn't quite psyched about this. 
I was like, it needs to be weirder. So I added Little Alter Boy again and shifted the first one up an octave, and we got this really weird tone for it. Check it out. You can hear how, like, just weird and robotic it sounds. Yeah, so that's... Uh, that's the bridge of Sky Sanctuary. Uh, for the ending, I just, I, I'm terrible at endings. I'm so bad at them. Um, honestly, that's what's holding up the, the new album is me figuring out how to end the songs. <laughs> I, I wish I was kidding about that. Um, and yeah, you're right. The Sonic 3 and Knuckles Steam version, uh, they changed a lot of the music for. I had that, I had the CD version of that game for PC back in the 2000s and it had that other soundtrack and it's so weird anyway um here's the ending uh and this is uh this is what i figured out for the ending i've just played it three times just played the last lick of the verse three times and just had the bass line change underneath it each time take a listen top just a little noodle and that's sky sanctuary let's get to one of the big ones this is angel island zone coming up yeah the fact that those the ones in the pc version of sonic 3 were the original beta themes they had in there before they brought on mj yeah that's crazy um so this is angel island zone act two from Sonic 3. Uh, this is the second song in the game. Um, and yeah, you're right. They do sound better on Genesis than PC. Because Genesis had that really funky FM synth. Thanks, Altair. Um, so, so yeah, this song is so just stacked with content. There is so much going on in the original. Um, and I tried my best to catch every little piece of it. And, uh, and and put it together here. These Pro Tools sessions take so long to load. Um, yeah, I slowed down the original. If you've heard, uh, I'll play a little bit of the original version. Please don't give me another ad. There we go. So we know that. Um, and I, I really tried to catch every little detail going on in that crazy, crazy song. So let's check it out. Oh, hang on. I want this louder. There we go. second folks <laughs> uh arteria makes this version of the profit that i use and for some reason it doesn't load properly sometimes I'm just going to turn that down for now.
That is Angel Island Zone Act 2. Real quick, I'm going to fix this profit track. Um, it's the exact same... Uh, whoop. It's the exact same patch that was on Starlight Zone. So I'm just going to go grab it from there. This is Pro Tools import session data, which has saved my life on so many occasions. And I'm just going to say, hey, that uh, keyboard part, that keyboard synth setting, can you just bring that on in here? And it'll just say, yeah, I can get that for you. Let's see if that fixed it. Almost. Hang on one second. Oh well, I'm not worried about it. Anyway, um, how do I? Oh, there we go. I got it. Sorry, Pro Tools is silly sometimes. There we go. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, let's go through this kind of instrument by instrument. Funky, funky drums right at the top. Just keeping it super simple. This is one of the main reasons I wanted to keep it to just these three drums. There is so much you can do here. Yes, I planned it all along, Altair. Uh, and of course, we bring in a tambourine as soon as we can. But let's look at the actual instrumentation going on here. Uh, I This is another song where I really just stuck to what the original arrangement was. I didn't change a note. If you listen to the bass line... I really stuck right there. Listen. Just just played what was on the page, played the original um, for really the entire song. Uh, I added a few licks here and there. But for the most part, stuck to it. Uh, talking about some of these sounds. This is still just that same A200 Scarby, the Wurlitzer keyboard. And this is a really cool line. I want to talk about this line because this took me forever to transcribe. Um, let me just relearn it. Okay, so we're playing a C minor 7 chord here. But they do they do this, and this is weird. These bottom two notes, E flat and G, move up to F and A, but that top note stays there, and we get this chord. And it shouldn't work, but it does. Uh, And here we're playing in what are called sixths. They are six notes on the piano apart from each other. One, two, three, four, five, six. Super fun line. Yes, Victor, as always, this will be available later. And yeah, Razor, I, I just wanted to chill it out. I was going to play this at original speed. And it just didn't sound right. I did originally record this up to like, and it was just like 
way too fast on real instruments. It's perfect on the Genesis, but it didn't make sense with these live instruments. So yeah, I, I toned it down and it ended up way cooler for me for that reason. Uh, piano's doubling the bass line most of the song. And then guitars, the guitar part on this took forever to get right. I really, really worked on this. Can I speed it up for you to listen? Yes, I'll do that at the end. So yeah, just really trying to land that guitar part. Really getting that, that part down took a while. Oh, and yeah, I, you know, I've had it in my head that I want to cover all of Sonic 3 and Knuckles front to back in like a more, more traditional longest solo ever style, like my metal thing. Um, and I, I, I would definitely do like a full speed version of this. Thanks for sticking around, Victor. I'll see you later. The piano is doing like this really cool, like cocktail Latin jazz thing. All that's happening is, let me move to my piano. Uh, okay, we're moving between a C minor and an F major chord. And then we just go to a higher voicing of C minor and back. Again, those guitars, they're, they're playing in harmony this time. Check it out. Here's one. And here's the other. And together we get that nice. Super fun. These are, this is a really simple melody. So simple, I can't even play it right now. But what really sells this sound is that I'm playing the part exactly the same, uh, not one octave apart, which would sound like this, but two octaves apart. So I have a low part down here and up here. this up like that and that gives you this really cool like kind of smooth jazzy cocktail sound I was going for with this it was fun Check out the guitars at this part. I'm going to solo them for a second. There's this little synth arpeggio going back. Yeah, exactly, Razor. You're exactly right. <laughs> Check out the guitars in this. There's this little synth arpeggio going on in the background of the original. And I had to figure that out for these guitars. This was the best I could do on it. And I'm really frustrated. I got the video editing wrong. I have them backwards. So this will make more sense if I flip them like this. 
Arpeggio picks up where the last one left off. It was fun. So I struggled a lot with how to how to extend these beyond their like original minute long runtime, right? These are all like a minute long loops. Um, and yeah, Altair, go for it. Do whatever you want with these. Um, I can't dance. I certainly can't dance. <laughs> um, so uh, when I'm extending these songs out to be like three minute, you know, pop song length, um, I have to find ways to make it interesting when hearing the same thing again. So I add a lot of keyboard licks on this one. Just really fun, like little keyboard solo stuff. Like here. I'm just doing minor pentax pentatonic stuff. It's literally the only thing I know how to do on keyboard, but it works. Uh, and I did that all over the place here. A lot of my solo licks are moving from, uh, trying to show this on the camera, <laughs> moving from a triad, these three fingers, one, two, three, to a suspended with the second in there, like this. And then moving it back up to the triad like this. So I'm doing this. Ba -da. How's it going, John Marine? Thanks for tuning in. So yeah, that's the keyboard licks I'm doing throughout all of this. Uh, I added some at the end here. We just kind of play the intro groove again. <laughs> that's a fun one. Uh, cool. On to what's next. Okay. So you'll notice the song I'm mousing over is called Live and Learn. Uh, the song from Sonic the Hedgehog, sorry, not that, from Sonic Adventure 2, uh, the, the final boss song. And, uh, and oh, thanks for subscribing, John. Um, and this wasn't on the album, was it? No. It's because it didn't turn out very good. <laughs> let's, let's check it out. Um, so yeah, I... This was another one of the first ones I worked out. And again, I, I wrote the whole thing out in my head, like on the first day. And I was just as psyched about this one as I was about City Escape. And City Escape turned out really fun. And this turned out not as good. Uh, so I shot the whole thing. Thanks, John. Um, uh, I shot the whole thing. I recorded everything. There's video. Everything was ready to go. And I'm sitting there listening to it. And I'm just like, oh, this isn't good. I can't put this out, so I didn't. But for some reason, I'm going to show you guys here tonight. So <laughs> that's what you get for signing on. <laughs> um, I, I was pretty happy with the instrumental side of this. I just like, I just hated how I sang this, and I could not make it sound good. I tried moving it into like my falsetto range and stuff, and it just it just never worked. So I'm going to play this without the vocals first, and then we'll talk about why the vocals didn't work. You can see how many vocals I tried putting in here to fix this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you know Live and Learn um, from, from Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, the theme song, the ending, final boss, that whole thing. Uh, keep that in mind as you hear this. Hang on. Let's turn up the volume here.
so yeah, yeah, Corpacan, Corpacopan, um, totally different vibe from the original, obviously, right? Um, and I was trying to sing it with like this, like hanging on the edge of tomorrow, like that kind of voice, and it just, it just didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work on this one. Um, I promise I'll do the song right soon. I really do. Although Toxic just did this, Toxic Eternity just did a cool cover of this one. Um, but I'm still, I'm still working on one. Uh, so yeah, I, like I had fun with this, but yeah, I tried doing vocals to this. I will play you like two seconds of this. They're so bad. They're just so bad, guys. Yeah, terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Copan, you're absolutely right. I need to get a female vocalist on this. Um, if you can think of one, let me know. Uh, there's there's a lot of good female singers doing video game music right now. Uh, and I, I would love to do some collabs soon. Um, but yeah, it just it just didn't work, you know? And I, I spent so much time learning the organ solo. Listen to this thing. Like I put so much work learning the guitar solo on organ and it just, it all never worked out. So, uh, that always happens with my projects. I always end up scrapping one thing. There's a couple songs I cut from, um, from boss fight this next album. I'll show you those at the end of this session too. Um, and, uh, uh, but we're going to move on to Hy hydro city, hydrocity, Emmy Jones. Yeah. I have to check her out. Thanks razor. You know, I'm going to write that down. Emmy Jones. There, I'll I'll check her out. Uh, Lacey Johnson is really cool too. Oh, I just got out again. I'm back. Yeah, she's been killing it on like Persona covers and stuff. Copying and pasting that now, Corpa Copan. Anne Boleyn. I'll check her out too. Cool. Yeah, there's so many great vocalists. All right. Yeah, we're getting into Hydrocity. Hydrocity. Whatever it is. <laughs> we never agreed on how to... How do you pronounce it? Is it Hydrocity or Hydrocity? We also had the proper Russian and French pronunciations earlier, which is nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is... This is a song that was not going to be on the album. I didn't even think of it. I tried covering the song like a million times a long time ago. There's a really great, really great cover of this. Um, it's a remix on Overclocked Remix, OC Remix, which is like an old school um, liquid area. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, uh, OC Remix, if anybody remembers, uh, was a great website. Still is. It's still around, but it was like really popular back in the day. Uh, great website for video game music remixes. And there was this great one on there called Walk on Water that was just ridiculously good cover of both acts of this this level. Um, of hydrosity and um, that's my vote I say hydrosity not hydrocity uh, and I tried covering it a million times it was always just kind of a rip off of that version which is like just the best live version of the original track um, so yeah walk on water it's so good right go go listen to it after all this it's so good it's on YouTube I think um, if you're mega mind <laughs> yes <laughs> it's such a good movie um so, uh, so this, I was practically done with the album and Rich, the, the sax player on this album was coming over later that day. And I was like, wait, wait, I should do. Oh yeah, I could. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. And I threw together Hydrosity in like an hour before he got there and he showed up and I had sheet music. And I was like, Hey, 
can you also do this? He's like, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> so he played this too. And he killed it. And he improvised a solo on this, which he never does. He improvised a solo for me. I begged him to. So yeah, let's check this out. Oh, hang on. I want the... Ah, come here. Come here. Pro Tools gets silly about its windows sometimes. Okay, here we go. This is, sorry, forget City Escape. This is my favorite one on the album. <laughs> I have a new favorite every time I listen back to this album. I love them all so much. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about this. Are we a quartet trio? Uh, just a, uh, I mean, it depends on if you're counting the number of actual people or the number of instruments. Uh, it's either like a, a septet or a duo. <laughs> yeah, uh, on this record, it was it was really just me uh, for most tracks. And then I called in my longtime friend, Rich, on sax uh for uh three tracks it was gonna be two and then i threw this page at him literally as he walked in the door and was like hey i want this one too <laughs> owen w uh marvel um shoot sorry i was thinking of marble garden marble zone is also good um how does marble marble zone go is that um Is that Marble Zone? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Sonic 1 is is the... It's not that I haven't played it. It's just the least played of my Sonic games. Uh, like, I, put, I grew up with Sonic 2, and we got Sonic 1 later. But, like, Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles are the ones I played, like, years of. Literal years of playtime. Um, Sonic 1, definitely less so. Um... But yeah, Labyrinth Zone. Oh, I don't remember Labyrinth Zone off the top of my head. I'll come back to that. Yeah, Marble's, Marble Zone's a great song. Um, okay, so let's dig into this because there's so much fun stuff going on here. Uh, drums are a straight four on the floor funkiness.
and I start off with just the uh, the synth line from this is played on the clav. Doing the slappy hands clav. That thing. Uh, and then once we get into the actual groove, I put the bass line, this thing, uh, doubled on the guitar. Did you say <laughs> Labyrinth Zone sounds like a mix of Led Zeppelin, Rugrats, and The Best of My Love by Cheryl Lynn? <laughs> That's another one I played a ton of on the cruise ship. Whoa, whoa. That's a great song. <laughs> I gotta listen to that. You're right. Anyway, here's the group. Uh, yeah, so this this guitar, bass, drums, and clav coordination is is the key to all of this. Just take a listen to how they lock in. Uh, yes, John, I'm a Pro Tools guy. Uh, that said, if you're looking to switch to something else, um, check out Reaper. Reaper's a really good option, and it's it's only sixty bucks. Technically, it has a free trial that lasts forever, but you should pay the sixty bucks at some point. FL Studio, man, I'll be honest, it's not my favorite. I have a student who who works in FL, and every time we do a lesson, uh, I I walk him through stuff in FL as best I can, and it just I can't wrap my brain around it. Uh, for EDM, I like Ableton, but if you're looking for a good all-purpose DAW for uh, really really little money, Reaper is a great option. Let's look to where the chords change. Oh, first, this lick. I love that so much. I snuck that in. I was in a jazz arranging class in college, and I, I, I snuck that into an arrangement of Autumn Leaves somehow. And the teacher was like, oh, I like that lick. And I'm like, cool, I made it up. <laughs> it's not from a Sonic the Hedgehog game. <laughs> Let's just look at the pieces of this groove because this is one of my favorite things I played on the album. We have a dance beat on the drums. Super simple. Uh, oh, but that dance beat is layered with a tambourine, of course. Funky. Bass line is, is doing the, the muted pluck thing I was doing in Starlight Zone. Boom, boom. And Clav is doing the same thing, but with funky chords. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Clav is doing something much more complicated. There's this, um, there's this like synth going on in the background of the original song. It, it's like these horns doing. Ba -da -ba -da. in between hits. So I'm playing the chords and then grabbing those real quick. There's some weird ones in this one. And you can hear I'm being sloppy. It's okay to be sloppy with the clav. Uh, the clav is a sloppy instrument and it's great. Uh, here's the guitar part. Just really funky, chunky chords like we were doing before. And all together, you get this nice sound.
You'll notice in between there is a Rhodes as well. That's just adding some like chord color. It's barely there. It's not doing anything rhythmic. Just filling things out a little bit. Uh, Ant-Man, the pickups in my telly are just the stock, uh, I think they're N3 pickups that came in the American Telecaster Deluxe in, when did I get that? 2012, I want to say. Um, that said, you do not need a telly to play funk. If you listen to Chemical Plant, all the tracks, all the guitar tracks on there are a Carvin 7-string guitar. Like the metalist guitar, sorry, second metalist after I got the Ibanez. Um, the metalist guitar I own. You can play funk on anything. Funk is in the hands. Funk is not in the guitar. A nice guitar helps, though. Then we got some organ going on here, too. Uh, the organ is... It's kind of like the clav in that it can be very percussive. That's that's good. You. Everybody needs a good excuse to get a telly. Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, the organ can be like the clav in that it's very percussive sometimes. You can you can do the same kind of like... And it can be very like, like aggressive. Like I will just... That kind of thing all the time on the organ. Castlevania funk, I never considered this. Thank you for that. That, that might come up. <laughs> I have a Mario Funk album planned, actually. Uh, it's called Funky Plumber, and I think that's the funniest thing in the world. Um, if you want to hear a little preview of that, go check out my Instagram. There's a bunch of tracks from sketches for it on there. Um, it's literally like this, but for Mario. You should go check it out at some point. I'm also planning to do a sequel to this album called Emerald Hill Funk. Uh, so I have too many albums planned is the short story. But... Organs can be very uh, aggressive. They're really fun instruments to play. So I'll do like these these two-handed slides, this kind of thing, up to a note. And you'll always see me like feeling around down here, doing like percussive stuff. That kind of thing. That kind of thing. Um, I love playing organ like that. That's all 100% of my organ style comes from the late, great Bernie Worrell, uh, who is the uh, the organ player, keyboard player for Talking Heads, and later, later um, Portrait of Funk. That's great. <laughs> um, I'll talk about that in a second, Altair. Um, uh, Bernie Worrell was the keyboard player for Talking Heads. Uh, I first knew him as the keyboard player for Colonel Claypool's Bucket of Bernie Brains, which was a like one-time tour that Les Claypool did. It was Les Claypool, Buckethead on guitar, Bernie Worrell on, on keys, and then uh, a drummer named Brain, who's a go-to drummer of Les Claypool's really often. Um, and uh, it was crazy and he's just got this like frantic violent piano style that i just love so that's where my, all my organ playing comes from him and uh john medeski of medeski martin and wood uh also a really good um really amazing keyboard player huge influence uh see you later john um altair you referenced uh, a place that people want to play organ a thousand years without stopping uh, i believe you're referring to the um i think it's a john cage piece uh, I'm going to look this up. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is a piece called, and this is the title as slow as possible. Uh, it's a piece of sheet music. It's got a good 30 measures uh, of music and it's when performed correctly has a duration about 639 years. Um, John Cage is known for writing weird experimental music. He wrote the piece 433 which is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. You literally just sit down for four and a half minutes. And then the piece is over. And that is that is a, a, a really famous musical piece. And As Slow As Possible is another one. Uh, yeah, Razor, I'm going to dig into some Castlevania after this and, and start thinking about stuff. Thanks for that. 
go check out john cage sometime he's the like craziest composer ever uh moving on here's our chorus Organ's doing that same little call and response answer synthesizer part in the back. That's really fun. Um, as I said, I threw this saxophone part at Rich like literally last second and he sight read it perfectly. It was great. super awesome um going forward let's see we drop into this kind of breakdown thing how long is the stream gonna be we're gonna go till 10 uh so another half hour or so okay so to set this up uh rich is a brilliant classical sax player um he's a great music educator uh, he he does not think of himself as an improviser, and he was super uncomfortable when I asked him to improvise. Uh, and I just wanted a sax solo so bad. And I was like, just play something, just play anything. And he played something, and he wasn't super psyched about it. And I was like, no, that was good. Now try this and this and this and this. And I just kept throwing new ideas at him, and like, okay, cool, but try it with this scale. Cool, but start low and go high. Cool, but start high and go low. And I would just like throw new and fun things at him each time. And we got this like really cool sax solo that I kind of augmented with this octave effect. Uh, if you check this out, take a listen. I love this little like dip he does in the intonation, this kind of like bend he does here. It's so like quirky and fun and I love it. So then we get back to the bridge and I always want something different. I hate doing the same thing twice in a song. Um, I just want some kind of change. And the change for this section was to add a harmony saxophone. Now, because we recorded this in like an hour, this entire album in an hour, all the sax tracks, um, I did not have time to write him a, har a harmony part, especially because I'd just written this part as he was walking in the door. Um, and uh, so I, I just had him record it again, his melody, and I auto-tuned a harmony from that. I like shifted all the notes into what the harmony would be. So your melody is I determined that a good harmony would be something like and you can hear auto-tune like really messing with it. The full song for the 10 second part before the end. I don't blame you. Me too. <laughs> Here's that harmony. We'll get to that in a second, Altair. <laughs> and then at the end, I used Pro Tools Verify uh, to, um, to make it sound like a record spinning down this kind of effect. That's so much fun. Uh, and then I played the melody on organ. And then I changed it up at the last second, like we were done. I was like, hey, Rich, hang on. Can you play the chorus too? I want you to play the chorus at the end. So I had him play the chorus on sax. while I shredded an organ solo over top of it. And I've never been more proud of any keyboard solo than this in my life. <laughs> and 
And if you notice my left hand during that, I'm always just kind of like feeding it into the right hand with these little sweeps. Uh, that is like the essence of my organ playing is just like just throwing these notes up into it. Those aren't notes on the bottom. That's just nonsense happening down there. When you're playing organ, you just have to like hit stuff. Same goes for clav. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, that is hydrosity. I love it. I was so happy with it. Uh, and then I, I have trouble remembering when exactly I finished these tracks. I want to say Green Hill Zone Good Future was the last thing I did, but I honestly don't remember. The organ part at a ballpark. Yeah, totally. Um, check out Wolfpack's song One for One DiMaggio. It's literally a, a like an organ groove song about baseball. And in the middle, he does like a baseball organ part, but it's also like a Bach fugue and it's insane. <laughs> uh, Woody Goss is their organ player and he's a ridiculous musician and human being in general. Uh, so here is the last track on the album, Green Hill Zone, Good Future. Uh, and I know there, I know the Good Future thing is from Sonic CD. Um, by the way, somebody asked how that remix is going. It's going well. It's going to come out after Boss Fight does. Um, just hit stuff, and as long as the proper notes come through, you're good. Exactly, exactly, Razor. Uh, so yeah, Green Hill Zone wasn't in Sonic CD, so there is no Green Hill Zone, Good Future. I just thought that was a good name and a good fun Sonic reference for what was just a happier version of Green Hill Zone than the other cover I did of it on this album. Uh, this is also, if you're following the Wolfpack references, this is also a, a total pastiche of uh, Wolfpack's Disco Ulysses, especially the bass line on this. I ripped right from Joe Dart's line on that. Hollow Knight versus Radiance. I haven't played Hollow Knight yet. I bought it. I bought it in the last Steam sale, and I'm going to play it. I'll check it out. Oh, I want this louder. Hang on. <laughs> exactly, Owen. <laughs> I think my camera finally actually died. It was doing pretty well for one battery charge, three hours. That's good. Uh, I have to get what's called a dummy battery, which is like a charger that pretends to be a battery in the camera and plug that in. They're just like 200 bucks, so I haven't bought one yet, but I guess I need one. Um, yeah, this does sound like a sitcom version of Sonic the Hedgehog. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Sonic family on TV. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was going for the Wolfpack sound on this. Disco Ulysses starts off with... Um, this melody, this this beginning part, all Green Hill Zone's intro is, is just a, a triad. It's just uh, this sound. You just start with an E minor chord. Move your hand one key to the left. And back up. How's it going, Sonic Plush? Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for defending my honor. <laughs> 
You go up to F, E minor, D minor. Hey, just keep doing that. Super easy, super low effort. Um, and, and I split that three note chord up between three different instruments. So the Rhodes plays one note. Uh, the, the piano plays another. And then finally the bass, when it comes in, plays the last note. And then we get into the real groove. Uh, I'm playing, it's not quite a four on the floor beat, it's more like a, I don't know, it's kind of a weird rock beat more than anything. Oh yeah, I guess it is a four on the floor. It's just not dancey. It's just like, it's like you said, it's like a sitcom. <laughs> But it's fun. Um, everybody is just hitting big block chords here. So with the drums, we get this nice. And here's where the bass breaks out into its own part. Check it out. Super fast. Dig it, dig it, on the on the fingers on that. The guitar gets dead simple. Check it out. One keeps playing the block chords. The left guitar. But the right guitar just goes to octaves. Altair, we're almost done. You can go to bed. <laughs> and together you get this nice sound. Again, we bring in some bells. Check it out. Bells are always a nice, nice feature. Steven Zeck, have I experimented with ska? Why, yes. <laughs> yes, I have. I think I covered a Streetlight Manifesto song on this channel. I don't know if it's still public because it was really bad, but it might be on here somewhere. Yeah, I'm an enormous Streetlight fan. I've seen them live a bunch of times. Uh, Real Big Fish as well. Um, yeah, love ska. Lesson Jake, all that stuff. Did a fun little stop here and entered back in on a weird beat. Check it out. Yeah, super good. Uh, and then, hang on, where is it? The bass lick I'm more proud of than anything else I've done in my life. <laughs> that's all real. I know it looks like it's cut, but that's just because I needed to boost the volume. Keyboard licks. Same thing I talked about doing in uh, in Angel Island. It's just starting on one two five and moving to one three five. Ba da. Just that kind of thing. You can't see my keys anymore because we lost that camera. But <laughs> that's all I'm doing. Yeah, the little pause is definitely cool. And Stephen, yeah, totally. Streetlight's awesome. Uh, uh, what's the name? Somewhere in the between their third album is was like absolutely defining for a lot of my college years um there was one summer where i simultaneously got into streetlight and uh chick korea and coheed and cambria that was a really weird summer for me but that kind of sums up where i was at musically uh yeah so that is 
Green Hill Funk, the album. Um, that is every track that made it on and one that didn't. <laughs> and uh, and it's fun. Um, let me find... I was talking about songs that didn't make the cut. Uh, I can tell you about songs that didn't make the cut for my new album, um, Boss Fight. Like I said, Boss Fight is all boss battle music from video games. Um, and one that didn't make... Actually, you know what? I don't think I even got that far on it. Is it a moot point? Did I even get that far? Oh, the Angel Island one at full speed? Yeah, you're right. We should. Hang on, let me load that up. How far did I get with this? I got nowhere. I didn't even track anything. I was going to do the Culex battle from uh, Super Mario RPG. Um, but it didn't, didn't end up working out. But I got... N like 10 really, really awesome, fun tracks. Yeah, let's boot up Angel Island and let's see how bad we break Pro Tools trying to speed that up. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> it's going to take a while to load. Um, yeah, I'm almost, almost done with Boss Fight. I'm shooting video for it right now. Um, I've been arranging it. Like I said, I was literally just trying to figure out the endings of songs. <laughs> Because I'm so bad at that. Sonic and Knuckles mini boss, dude. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm honestly already planning the sequel to Boss Fight, and that might make it on there, because that's such a good one. Get ready for something. <laughs> loading, loading. Yeah, I have the sequel to Boss Fight planned. I have the sequel to Green Hill Funk, which is Emerald Hill Funk planned. Uh, I have a, another one called Funky Plumber, which is a Mario album. Uh, and then I really want to do some original music at some point, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a few more longest solo Alver, longest solo ever albums. Triple Trouble, dude. Nobody talks about Triple Trouble. I had Triple Trouble for the Game Gear. <laughs> that was a great game. I should revisit that. You know, I it's been forever since I played that, and my Game Gear died so long ago that I don't remember the music from that. But yeah, the Game Gear Sonic games were were like a weird hidden gem. They were super cool. I think I had Sonic 2 for Game Gear and Triple Trouble. Yeah. Well, I make Let's Plays. Um, I want to do gaming content at some point. Uh, I thought about maybe doing a Twitch for that or a separate YouTube channel just for gaming stuff. And yeah, 3D Blast, you're absolutely right. I almost did a 3D Blast track last week, but we ended up doing Sonic CD instead. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a good one too. There's so much good, so much good music out there. I want to cover it all, and I want to write some too. That's all I want to do. Okay, so let's speed this up, and let's talk about how we're going to speed this up. Uh, Pro Tools has a feature called Elastic Time, and we're going to use it. It has a habit of crashing Pro Tools. But let's see what happens. Okay, everybody's in elastic time mode, and we're going to shift things to ticks, which is just Pro Tools' way of saying follow the tempo. And uh, let's find out what tempo Angel Island Act 2 is. Heroes. Yeah, Heroes was great. Sonic Heroes. Okay, looks like this is about 138. 140. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's, see, let's, watch, let's watch Pro Tools choke on this. Oh, it's doing it. It's working. As you see these lines get filled in, that means Pro Tools is processing them. Okay, here's what it sounded like. It's going to sound terrible. This is why I didn't do it.
worked way better than it deserved to. <laughs> that was like the Nightcore remix of my version of it. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it like like you said, it works. Like that was cool. That was really cool. I think mine was more realistic for what I was going for on this album, which was like a live band feel. Obviously, that was so cool, though. Um, yeah, yeah, they're really weird when it's sped up. It's just so much going on that works perfectly when a Sega Genesis can play back these tracks like absolutely flawlessly. I'm still looking at the dead camera. What am I doing? Um, but when a live musician is playing it, it just, I, I, I just couldn't keep up. I can't play it that fast. Uh, I can't play that groove like that that fast. So the, the slowed down version is, is why that happened. It just didn't groove when I tried to play it this fast. Um, yeah. So thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Uh, this was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed getting to go through this album like a year after I made it. Um, yeah, I like both versions, Altair. And thanks, Fick. Um, yeah. So thanks to everybody who hung out tonight. Uh, Razor and Altair and Owen and Fick tuning in at the end here. Uh, Copan, of course, hanging out all night. And uh, Steven Zeck earlier, Sonic Plush Adventures tuned in for a minute. Um, let's see who I missed. Stray Mankel. Uh Earlier on, uh, we had Rich, the, the sax player on this, tuning in, which was awesome. And Friest Fry of All Fries, Doom Guy, and Landon. Uh, Victor Barbieri was there earlier, and Ant Man Felix. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, it means so much to hang out with you guys here every night, every week. Uh, I will be here back here next Thursday. We'll be here every Thursday. Hopefully I'll have two functioning cameras again. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do next week. I'll think of something fun. Maybe I'll ask you guys on uh, on here on YouTube or on Twitter. Hit me up at Longest Solo Ever, and we'll, uh, we'll talk. Think of some fun stuff. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I will see you next time.